Schefter is. Joining us now, Stephen Moore of the Wall Street Journal. He was listening to our interview with Marion Barry a little earlier, and we were, of course, pressing the former mayor on the living wage, so-called winning living wage. Let's rename it. Let's call it the I hate Walmart, and I'm going to penalize them, Bill. <laughs> uh, we talked to him about that. Stephen Moore, what do you think of this story? You know, it started out as a local story. Brian and I were talking about it the day after it cleared committee about five weeks ago, and it is a national story now. Everybody is talking about how the D.C. government wants to penalize Walmart, it seems, for being successful. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, there's so much irony in this story because, you know, what happened was that they have these new developments uh, throughout uh, D.C., many of them in, in some of the lowest income areas, and they've really been suitors trying to get Walmart to come. And so Walmart had agreed to build six new superstar uh, stores uh, with as many as 400, 500 uh, workers in each store, each store, by the way, generating uh, an estimated million dollars each in tax revenues for the city. So this is just the gift that just keeps giving. And uh, what happened, as you guys know, is that the unions basically had a huge influence on the city council, and they basically said, we can't bring Walmart into the city. They don't have unionized workers. Even though, by the way, there's about five people who uh, sign up for, who try, you know, enroll to try to get every one job that Walmart has open. And I made the mistake, by the way, guys, of going on MSNBC <laughs> the other night. Well, that was a mistake. That. that was your first mistake. <laughs> exactly. But I, I made this point, and the left has made a lot of fun of it, but it, it is absolutely true, and I'm going to say it again on your show, that Walmart has done more to help low-income Americans and move people off of poverty that every and that any social welfare program in the history of Washington, D.C. And the reason is that Walmart provides low-income people low prices. You know, what's they're saying? Everyday low prices. I, I, just those, to that point, did you read yeah. the, 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 the column by Petula Dvorak in the Washington Post? She's out in, in Ward 7 talking to people about the Walmart thing. Uh-huh. And, and she's talking to a man who's a, who's a district employee. And he says, hold on a minute. He goes back into his house, comes out with a brand-new shiny tricycle, apparently bought right. for a grandchild right. or something. Right. says, look, I went to Toys R Us, and this tricycle was $79. I went to Walmart and bought it for 49 I saved 30 bucks. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly what Walmart means. Low prices, it means jobs, it means tax for the, for the tax yeah. base of the District of Columbia. And they're just, they're, they're just uh, aggressively, because of the union connection, they are going after Walmart. Yeah, and look, Sam Walton, I knew Sam Walton. He was, he was staunchly anti-union. He said that he would never allow, you know, unions at Walmart stores. And that's, of course, by the way, an amazing statistic. Uh, three out of every four managers at Walmart, and the, the managers make anywhere between sixty dollars and $120,000 a year. Three out of four of them started out at Walmart as minimum wage workers. So, you know, yeah, you start at a low level, but if you're proficient in what you're doing, you show up on time, you're a good worker, you can climb up the ladder of success. Now, look, I'm not here to say that Walmart is the greatest company in the history of America. If you read our editorial pages, you know we've really been, you know, taking on Walmart. They, they've actually endorsed a higher minimum wage, which we think is a terrible policy. They've been, they endorsed uh, Obamacare, the, the folks at Walmart. So. I'm not here to carry the water for Walmart. I just think it is an act of profound stupidity yep. for a city with an 8.5% unemployment rate, with a lot of areas with no economic development, to be going after the, the anchor tenant in a lot of these shopping centers. And by the way, if Walmart does not come into these shopping centers, I talked to some of the developers, they say these whole uh, developments may go bankrupt. Absolutely. Uh, Steve Moore is our guest, editorial board member and senior economics writer for the Wall Street Journal. And, and you're latest article oh, and by the way his uh, his book is who's the fairest of them all thank you grab that baby over at amazon hey uh, steve moore uh, your latest article is about obamacare we're going to have a vote this week where the house of representatives is going to say listen mr president you you say that unilaterally we don't need the employer mandate for at least another year then let's kill the employee mandate as well uh, what should congress do about obamacare and and because there's so much uncertainty does this mean that employers are still sort of stuck and not able to hire new hires because they don't know how much it's going to cost them. 
Yeah, look, the only problem I have with the president's announcement to delay the implementation for a year is let's let's delay the implementation of this for five or ten years. I mean, look, I think the thing is coming unhinged. I think every single day, I mean, I listen to your guys' show every day, you have new news about something that has gone wrong with Walmart. And I think the single biggest problem, uh, Walmart, I with mean, Obamacare. With Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, you know, the, the biggest problem of all, though, is here we have a country with 20 million people unemployed or can't find a full-time job, according to the latest job statistics. 20 million people. And we are about to put into a law, uh, you know, take effect a law that that basically encourages employers not to hire full-time workers, not to hire additional workers. I can. Do you guys know what a 49er is, by the way? Not a San Francisco 49er. I know what a 49er you know, is. It's the companies that have 49 employees and will never hire the 50th. Yeah. That's exactly right. And you know what? I cannot tell you how many times I talk to small businessmen and women, people own restaurants, people own McDonald's franchises, people own retail stores, and they tell me, Steve, I will be damned if I ever hire a 50th worker. And I've even talked to a lot of employers who have 60 workers. And you know what they're going to do? Cut, they're going, cut they're down. Going to scale back. To, they're going to scale back to 49 workers. So this yeah. is an anti-jobs bill at the worst possible time. But, you know, and, and what it seems to me is that employers, I mean, the, the, the Obama administration saw this coming. They knew that it yeah. was going to be a real issue in the midterm elections. Of so course. they decided to delay it. But I think that, you know, in, in the business world, and this is an example of how the Obama administration doesn't even have a clue how the business world thinks. They need to plan long term. They need to come up with a strategy and then stick with it. So they're going to go ahead and if they were going to cut the jobs, I have a feeling they're going to cut the jobs anyway because yeah. that was the strategy that was in place. And you don't change your strategy on a dime because the Obama administration suddenly decides that they've got a political problem on their hand. Well, that's right, because uh, employers have already been cutting back exactly. on employment. And people say, well, wait a minute, the law wasn't even supposed to take effect until January 1st of 2014. But just as you said, the employers are getting ready for this. They're looking ahead. They're saying, you know, I'm not going to hire all these new employees if I have to lay them off in six months. So how's and that so, Obamacare working out for you now? <laughs> exactly. And, then, you know, this is a – this. I'm going to make a prediction to you guys, though. Quick, quickly. I think within, within six months months to a year, I think we, we may see the full repeal of Obamacare. Wow. The thing, and every, wow. In, in every way, the, the law is, is coming, the wheels are coming off. Laying down the marker, Steve Moore, he's on the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, one of our uh, smartest guests because he said he listens to us every morning. That's so right. right there, he goes to the top of, course, of the that list. That will immediately go into a promo. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Moore. Appreciate it. <laughs>